Okay, welcome back. This is standard six. We're going to be applying simple references to our document. We're using the uh, text of the U.S. Constitution. Uh, so we're going to start with adding a cover page. In Microsoft Word, that's very easy to do. It's in the Insert tab because we're inserting something. And on the far left-hand side, we have our cover page. There are some pre-designed formats for you to make you look like you know what you're doing. So I'm going to choose one with a picture. So I can try to make those changes. I have placeholders. I have the placeholder for my picture, a uh, placeholder for my title, a subtitle, and some other things like that. Make sure that if you're going to be using a template, don't just leave these here. You'd be better off just deleting, for instance, this particular piece, the subtitle if you're not going to use it, rather than leaving the placeholder so that it looks like you were sloppy in your work. I'm going to change the picture. So click on the picture to select it. Go to my picture tools and I can now I can change my picture I'm going to use an online source and I'm going to be using the Constitution okay, so let's use this picture right here we will insert it and now we have replaced the picture we had here so it's relatively easy to put in your cover sheet I'm not going to bore you with putting the rest of this together Next up, we're going to be putting in a table of contents. Our table of contents is found under the References tab. Uh, you'd have thought maybe you were inserting something, but since this is considered a reference, it refers you to different places in the document, they've chosen to place that in the Reference tab. What I've done is I've taken all of the different article and section headings and turned those into these pre-built styles that we had off of our home tab. So I have heading one and heading two that I've used. Heading one is what I have for all the articles. So article one talking about the uh, congressional branch, article two talking about the presidential branch, the executive, those are all heading one. And the subsections within it are all heading two. The reason I use those is when I go to my references tab, I can insert a table of contents and because Word now knows that those are headers. I'm going to be able to just choose one of these automatic table of contents. And when I insert it, what I get is this table of contents here with all of my page numbers. So I have Article 1, Sections 1 through 9, Article 2, Sections 1 through 4. I'm going to do a Control Enter right here just to put that on its own page. Control Enter starts a new page for you without having to enter a number of times to get down to the bottom of that page. So I have now put in a, a cover sheet and a table of contents uh, really rather quickly using the setup features here in Microsoft Office. Citations are really pretty easy to use while you're in Microsoft Word. I'm in my reference section and I have a, a section here within this a group called Citations and Bibliography. This allows me to add in my sources and then put them into my document. So if I go to manage sources, I have four sources of already that I have created here. I have uh, Thomas Paine's Common Sense, which was uh, printed in 1776. I've got William Shakespeare's Hamlet in 1603. All I have to do when I have a source that I'm quoting is I can come over to new and create a brand new book, a book section, journal article, uh, website, document from a website, some art. I can properly cite almost everything in here and it's going to give me the options of the things that I need. So in the case of a book, I need the author, I need the title, the year, the city, and the publisher. Once I've got all of those, then I can just click OK to add that and it will be one of my sources that I can use in my document. At this point, all I have used is Thomas Paine's Common Sense and Shakespeare's Hamlet. Obviously, these have nothing to do with the uh, Constitution, but that's okay. I'm going to show you them for example. I've created a source and now from writing papers I can just pull those in. Let's say I wanted to pull on this about the dress code. Um, let's copy it over to here. Now I have three sources that I have used in this document. I'm going to hit close. To enter a citation, let's just put here at the end of the section right here. I'm going to insert a citation and it's going to ask me which of these do I want to use that I already have. So maybe I'm, I'm quoting Thomas Paine in this. So here is the notation that I wanted. 
The nice thing too is that if your teacher is wanting you to use APA, you've got that format. If, however, they want you to be using MLA or one of these others, you can select MLA and it's going to change the way your formatting looks in the document. So when you have that one crazy teacher that wants you to use the IEEE, you just click on this and it's going to change the way that it is, it is being cited so that it's all being done in the same way and it's all being properly cited as, as the way your teacher wants that to be done. Next up we're looking at inserting footnotes and endnotes. A footnote will go at the bottom of the page, an endnote is basically the same thing only it's just at the end of your document. Whichever it is your teacher is wanting, use that, it's just a click of a button which will change it for you. So here it says that the uh, age of 25 years is what we're looking for uh, for a representative. Now I think that's probably pretty young considering how old our representatives are right now so I'm going to just put an insert a footnote here and at the bottom of my page you can see I've got my note I've got the one here in the superscript comes down here to the bottom bottom of my page place my comment in there that 25 is pretty darn young and then when I'm done I click off of this I've now just inserted a footnote the last reference I'll be working with here is the bibliography the bibliography is the collection of all of the articles and books and maybe speeches that you listen to that you created your document the easiest way to keep yourself out of trouble with plagiarism is just if you read an article about it add it as one of your references even if you don't end up quoting it directly that way no one can accuse you of stealing some of the work so in my references section i am in my citations of bibliography I'm going to pull this down. I have some different things. I can insert a bibliography, references, works cited. They all are pretty similar. I would base it based upon which one your teacher is asking for. If they're asking for references, well, here's one that says references. When I click this, you're going to recognize these three references as the ones that we use when we were managing our sources. These are the three active sources that I have for the document that I'm using. And you can see I've got those references all right there and it's in pretty quickly. If I ever need to, I change one of these references back in my, my managed sources. I can go back, I can maybe remove one, take it out of here. I hope that didn't work. Let's, let's add one more then. Add one more. This is now not up to date, but by clicking on the table and updating citations, it adds it in for me. I can do the same thing with my table of contents. When I make a change, I click on it here's how I update my entire table so if I change one of these headers or I add something new I can just update the table and it is ready to go for me okay next up we're going to be putting a caption on an image now I could do this with any image I could do it with a text box or maybe I, I put a chart in the middle of it doesn't matter uh, what I can do is I can add this text to it to kind of help label where I'm at I have two options uh, my favorite is probably just right clicking and inserting a caption or I could while I'm in my references go to insert caption doesn't matter which I do so figure one the caption is I'm just a bill this is from the old schoolhouse rock series I click OK and I've got figure one I'm just a bill now if I edit this a little bit of space in there the other thing I want to think about doing is if I right click I can go into the alternate text now the alternate text this is what will be read to someone who might be visually impaired uh, if they are using a document reader this is kind of important if you want to be compliant with the ADA which is the Americans with Disabilities Act the reader will come along and it won't be able to see the picture of the bill with the boy sitting here so it's going to be reading what the alternate text says so in this case, the alternate text, I've changed it to say it's a picture of a boy sitting on the Capitol stairs with a bill from the Schoolhouse Rock series. That way, someone who's unable to really see what's going on in the picture and is listening will be able to understand what sort of a picture you've gone uh, to put in here to help them understand a little bit more about uh, what your paper's about. And the last thing we're going to do, we're going to be looking at comments that we can put throughout a document. Comments are things that... If you're sharing a document with someone and they have questions about it or your boss makes suggestions uh, for changes to be made in the document, uh, they can put those notations in there and they don't necessarily have to print so no one else sees what's going on in the document. So here at the end of, of the text here I have George Washington 
it's abbreviated G with that superscript O, so it looks like it's G to the zero power Washington. I'm going to insert a comment here. So I'll go to insert, and I'm going to put a comment in here. And the comment is going to be, what's with the O? Please change this abbreviation. Okay. Now what I have is when I click off of here, I still have side pane open. I've got my document, but I've also got this comment here. So as you're coming in here, you can say, all right, yes, I want to uh, use this. I can resolve this. Let's click resolve that I've changed it. Okay, I'll put this in here. I'm going to change GO to George, and then I'm done with this particular comment. Okay, so now I have resolved it. When I've resolved all of my comments, I have the option now going back into review. Here is the tracking group, and the default right now is showing that we're going to be uh, looking at all the documents. Instead of showing all that, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to say I want no markup, and it's going to remove this. If you don't remove that markup when you print your document, what you're going to see is you're going to be seeing that bubble there off the end of at the side of your page, and it's going to uh, someone's going to know that there are comments within your document that you haven't yet hidden. All right, and that does us for standard six, the simple references within a document.